Hello everyone and welcome to the 18th episode of Down the Hobbit Hole. My name is Emily and today is Monday, July the 17th, 2017. And this is my weekly podcast about knitting and spinning and all things making. Uh, I am coming to you today from East Tennessee where I live with my husband, uh, my less fluffy dog, and uh, my very pudgy cat, and our crazy chickens. And yeah, uh, if you want to find us online, you can find us on Instagram as Misty Mountain Makers. You can find me on Ravelry as Misty Mountain Makers. And you can find the Ravelry group uh, as uh, under the name Down the Hobbit Hole. And if uh, you want to get in touch with me, but Ravelry or Instagram, not quite your thing, that's fine. You can go ahead and email me at emily at mistymountainmakers.com. So today, uh, we are outside. Uh, this is the back end of the house um, under the carport. And uh, I've been dying today. My kind of pop-up dye studio behind us. Uh, you can see we've got the sink over there hooks up to our garden hose so I can rinse out uh, fibers and things out here, which falls out the back and kind of off down the hill, and which is why it's extra important to make sure everything gets absorbed into your fiber before going back out into the wild. Uh, got a table in the back. Uh, table on the side and then I've uh, got uh, some hot plates on the ground and just all kinds of stuff from things we've been building so it's a little bit of a mess but uh, kind of waiting for a few things to cool down on the dye pots and I figure I'd get the podcast done. My dye studio was originally supposed to be over in our garage but when it came time to actually move everything in we I have a, a steamer table. You can't you can't see it. It's not out here right now, uh, but it needs a special plug and current amperage. It needs special electricity. So, in order to do that, to put it in the garage, we'd have to do a whole lot of work, um, a whole lot of electrical work, and get an electrician out and. It, became just one big mess. So the new plan is we have the amperage that we need here at the house. So I'm going to be able to use the back half of the carport to, because this is actually, it'll fit two cars, but our septic tank is on the other side. So you can't actually park around that side. Um, so I'm going to have my steamer table out here and this will be my dice studio. So it should be a lot of fun. I really like it. Um, I will probably like it less in winter when it's snowing, but I think it'll be okay. <laughs> At least I can get things heating, run inside, set a timer, and then come back out and die. And I've got such nice, lovely, warm shawls now that I should be warm anyways, so it'll be okay. <laughs> I did actually record earlier today and I got inside and I started watching it and it looked like it was straight out of the 60s and I had accidentally put a filter on it. So everything looked wrong. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's okay. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and do it again. So before we get into the knitting, I did want to talk about the there and back again cow and do another little update. So since the last time I recorded, which has only been five days uh, since my mom's coming into town tomorrow, so I have a recording a little out of schedule since I normally record on Wednesdays, uh, but I have done just over uh, 12 miles, so I have just over 47 miles to get to Weathertop, but we have, uh, because part of the There and Back Again cow and you can find the chatter thread down below, um, along with Instagram and that email and everything. You'll find that all below. But <laughs> um, part of what we're doing is uh, we are knitting Lord of the Rings and Hobbit and uh, just anything Middle Earth themed. Uh, we're knitting projects for that and crocheting. 
and we are also tracking our mileage uh, to see where that places us in Middle Earth. So my goal is to make it to Weathertop. So I have about uh, almost 48 miles to go to reach Weathertop and we've got four weeks so, so I really don't think that's going to be a problem uh, given that I've been averaging even you know on not so good weeks uh, over 15 miles usually getting closer to 2025 uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem at all I just want to make sure that that is what I'm aiming for and any distance I can get beyond that would be great uh, and uh, for the knit along, I did say we have four weeks left. So if you're uh, interested in joining, you've got plenty of time. We have, uh, some people have posted cardigans. We've got a lot of shawls uh, and a pair of socks. So anything you wanna submit, if you've got a hat you've been working on, uh, whips are totally welcome. Uh, the only thing is, as long as you can tell me why it ties into uh, a Middle Earth theme. Uh-uh, Tesla. Leave them alone. Go lay down. I think the turkeys are going to be making their way out of the woods in a second. Uh, but anyways, as long as you can tell me why you think it's Middle Earth themed, or at least why it reminds you of Middle Earth, then that's fine. That'll totally work and you can uh, get that submitted. Uh, we also have a chatter thread where people are kind of uh, giving each other encouragement, showing what we're working on, and just kind of chatting about Lord of the Rings, if we're re-watching the series, things like that. So definitely join with us, it's a lot of fun. And I guess I'll show you what I've been working on for the cow. Um, I've already finished one shawl, and I am making another, and you guys have seen this before. It is the, here we go, it is the Traveling Woman Shawl. And I'm doing, uh, the first one was in a fingering weight, and so now I'm doing it in a DK version. And here it is. Now this is a so far unnamed colorway uh, that I will be recreating and naming as soon as I get it down. I dyed up a couple skeins that didn't come out quite right, but hopefully we'll have more skeins and a name for it soon. But this is a DK weight, and it's gonna be quite a bit larger than my original fingering weight version. And, oh, it's gonna be so warm and cozy. Uh, Cause the, this is definitely going to be my winter snuggle shawl. And I'm calling this my uh, Feely's Traveling shawl because uh, Feely and Keely, which they were the youngest of the dwarves who came to Bag End on that fateful day, uh, they had blue hoods, so I figured it was appropriate. And I should have that done. I've done five rows since the last episode, and I should be able to finish it soon, because I think there's gonna be a lot of hanging out with my mom while it's too hot outside, and we'll just be knitting and watching. TV shows and stuff, so I should be able to get a lot of work done on that. Um, I'd like to have it done by next week, but it is going to, it's getting into the more complicated chart. Uh, the final chart has more going on in it, so I just, I have to pay more attention. So I may get it done, I may not. I've got four weeks, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, the other project I've been working on, you guys have also seen if you're returning viewers. And that is my Falls of Rowrus socks. So as you guys know, these have kind of been on the back burner. Uh, <laughs> I've completely joined the ribbing. So you can see it's now ribbing all the way across. So we've got this nice kind of art deco V going on here. And oh, sorry about the squeaky chair. Um, these are for my husband, Tim, and he wears size 13 shoes, so US size 13, so he's got some big feet, and he likes his legs to be really long, because he's usually wearing work boots, but lately he's gotten in the habit, since it is so hot, he's been wearing his Vans a lot more, so he told me, and I think he, I think he mostly said this, 
because he's just hoping I'll actually finish a pair of socks for him, another pair. He's got two already, but uh, they're kind of lumpy and weird, so uh, he told me I could make him ankle socks. So I'm sure that means it's still going to be about uh, four inches after the heel, but that's a lot less than I thought it was going to be, and I don't, I wasn't consciously putting off his socks because of how much I was going to have to knit for the leg, but I definitely feel more motivated now. So getting back to it, I want to have a good amount done. He's going to be going on a business trip while my mom's in town, so I'd like to be able to surprise him with some some work done on these when he gets back, so we'll see. But four weeks, I'm a little worried about getting these done in time, but hopefully I can. Uh, these are, uh, oh, well let me finish with these. These are uh, just basic vanilla socks that I went back because they were too big and I started, um, I went back and added all this ribbing, which you can see on previous episodes. And uh, I'm knitting these out of Malibrigo sock in the Aguas colorway with uh, Haya Haya Sharps in the 2.5 millimeter needles. And earlier, when I did the first recording, I mentioned that they're a little too sharp for me, but they're not exactly painful. And then I got inside, and while the video was loading onto my computer and getting into the editing software that I have, uh, I may have punctured the skin. <laughs> I don't remember doing it, but I definitely felt the needle hit that spot again. So, got the band-aid, so I should be safe for a little while. I don't think that I'll be getting high high sharps again. I think I'm a little too dainty for those, so I'll be sticking to just the normals. I do love Haya Haya's though. Pretty much anything I've gotten from them has been of very nice quality, and I've always been satisfied with them, so nothing wrong with them, and lots of people like the Sharps, so definitely try them out if you haven't tried them before. I think I've just got little baby fingers, so. <laughs> uh, it is in the high 80s if not the 90s today, so sorry if I'm a little glisteny out here. Very warm, and it is 5.30, so the temperature should be dropping as the day goes on. I've just got water with a nice little lemon slice in here. All right, so those are the two items that I have for the There and Back Again Cal, uh, and I am not eligible for prizes, and I will try to start showing those prizes either probably two weeks out, uh, possibly next week, but um, I'll have those finished up soon, and I'll be able to show them to you. Uh, but if I do draw my name from the chatter thread or from the finished objects thread, then I am uh, going to get myself a present. So, everybody can win. <laughs> but onto whips that are not for the cow. I have been working on my Nargle socks, and this is where most of my progress in the last five days, or last of, most of my effort has been going over the last five days. So I finished the green heel, or the green cuff, separated the socks, because originally this was just one long tube of stocking it. So I finished the green cuff, separated the socks, I finished a toe, and finished a heel. So these are, uh, this is my Nargles colorway on my halfling base with uh, contrasting minis in an 80-20 uh, merino nylon blend for cuffs, toes, and heels. And what I've done is, and I talk about this on the last couple episodes in more detail, so you can see it there, but I uh, knit a cuff 
knit stockinette for 12 inches, and then knit another cuff, and cut it down the middle so that I could have two separate socks. Now, one thing I did not account for when I was measuring the socks is how much the socks would shrink as they stretch, because they are very tight. Uh, so, I will need to go back and fix this heel. Uh, I'm not using any particular pattern, but I am using uh, just my, these are not my favorite needles, and I talked about these last week. These are uh, Knit Picks, and they're not my favorite, but I mean, they are getting the job done. I had another set that the needle just popped right off of the cable, so these haven't done that yet, so that's good. Um, it's just the, the join isn't great, and the cable can pop out, and if it, sorry, uh, if it doesn't, then it's hard to get your yarn over the join, so not my favorite. I don't think I'd ever buy these again, but uh, considering they were free, really shouldn't be complaining about them. But I am doing a heel on this side, and I'm using the German short row heel with the garter, wait, the German short row heel with the heel flap adjustment from Mina Phillips uh, Vanilla Sock Recipe, and I'm not doing anything special to make space for the uh, extra rows for the heel flap adjustment. Um, it winds up just fitting just fine. You can see they're just stitched down in the corner. And this side I haven't stitched down yet, but there is space. And I didn't do anything special. I just separated and, or I just picked up stitches and cut out the middle. There are patterns online for doing afterthought socks. Um, I have not looked at any of them because I'm enjoying using this as a learning experience to try and force myself to figure it out. And it's been a lot of fun so far. I just need to, once I finish this green heel, then I will have, I will have all the pink that's left, all the blue that's left, and then uh, just that little bit of green that's going to be left. And what I want to do is extend these the toe on this one. I'm going to tear it out and I want to do an inch of knitting before I add the toe because I thought the toe would take about two inches and it really comes out to being just over an inch. So I think if I extend that toe, the shrinkage that's going to happen when I cram my Butterflies are okay, wasps are not. Um, okay. <laughs> I think if I uh, add another inch and then put that toe back on, that this will fit just fine. It's a little tight in the cuff, uh, getting it over my heel, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, so yeah. And what I will do with those leftover colors is uh, stripe the toe so that I use up all of the colors and I get kind of a more fun heel. So you can see I used a little of the green, but not too happy with how this looks. And I had a two ounce braid of it, or a two ounce sample of Nargles that I was working with, and I still have all of this left. So I may try to do like a Rose City Rollers or something like that uh, with the rest of this colorway just to see how I like those. But I think that's, I think that's pretty much everything. Um, mostly I have been working on my Nargle socks and I'm so in love with them. Uh, they, oh, I forgot to mention, the heel, it is just a German short row heel uh, from Mina Phillips Vanilla Socks, but uh, what she says to do is just, if you want to, you can just knit both sides instead of switching to purling uh, on the wrong side, and it'll give you this nice squishy heel. So 
I did this for my Hermione's Everyday Socks, which I have yet to finish, uh, but I really like it, and I'm really happy with it. So we'll see how it wears. I will hopefully have these done by the next time I record. So these I think that I will have no problem finishing since I'm already starting on the short rows for the heel and then I just have to put in two toes with an inch of knitting. I don't think that's going to be a problem. So next week hopefully these will be finished. Uh, as far as spinning goes, I haven't done any spinning. Not a single little bit in the past five days. Which, it's tour de fleece. I should be spinning. But I didn't want to make this something that I punish myself for. I wanted tour de fleece to be fun. So I'm going to try to add a little more spinning to my day to day. But I'm not going to go crazy and shove everything else out of my life to try and get the spinning in there. I'm just going to keep doing it when the, you know, when I feel inspired to spin and I'm just going to enjoy it. It's going to be good and I'll have yarn at the end of it, even if it is six months from now or something. But I think that's everything that we've got for knitting and spinning and you know, all the crafty part of the podcast. So if that's all you're here for, that's totally fine. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in this week. Uh, if this was your first time watching, I hope you liked it. And uh, for the returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back. It really means a lot to me, so thank you. Uh, but I will see you guys next week. I will be recording again on Monday, since I'm liking this podcasting at the start of the week, rather than the like smack dab middle of the week. So we're going to keep trying this, I think. So I'll see you guys Monday. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. And for everybody else, we will move on to shop update and probably the shortest, not so nitty portion that we've ever had. <laughs> All right, so for shop update, we've got a couple of new yarns. I've been having a lot of fun over the last uh, couple of weeks, just kind of playing and coming up with things. Um, I've got some new dyes in and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, the yarns I'm going to show you are yarns that are definitely going up tomorrow. I have some other individual skeins that you may also see tomorrow, but I'll save those, put those aside. Uh, they may end up, well, they may not, they may end up in the update. So definitely check it out. That'll be tomorrow, which will be Tuesday the 18th at 6 p.m. Eastern. So, uh, the first yarn that we will have is, this one's called Dory, Nori, and Ori, and it's named after dwarves. I'm not sure how well this is coming through. There we go. Uh, it's named after the dwarves from The Hobbit. Uh, Dory and Nori had purple hoods, and Ori had a gray hood, so that's why I've named it after them and it's purple with gray and lots of black speckles coming through here. They're more charcoal. They're, they're definitely gray, but we've got two skeins of this. And the next skein is actually called My Sihaya, which is from Dune. It's what Paul called Chaney. So, here it is. Sihaya is uh, Fremen, I believe, or Jakopsa for, I don't remember which one. Those are two separate languages, but uh, not to be too nerdy about Dune. <laughs> uh, but he calls her my Sihaya, which is uh, my desert spring. So I just, I think that's really cute. It's one of my favorite parts about the book, uh, the whole series actually. But here it is, and it's uh, this nice kind of aqua teal color with all these darker teal speckles throughout. And this like greenish tan for the sand, so here we go. 
And I've got four skeins of this, and this is all on my Elvin base. Uh, Elvin is 75% um, superwash merino, 10% ten cell, and 15% nylon. So it's a great sock yarn. It's very shiny with just the slightest hint of sparkle. Very slight, but very pretty. And then here's another one that we've got. This one's called Tutti Fruity. And it is a tonal pink that's covered in all different colors of speckles. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but there's green and pink and teal and purple and navy and yellow and just they're all bright and vivid little speckles on this tonal pink. Oh, I'm very happy with it. I have six of this coming to the update tomorrow. And here it is as a skein. So we'll have six of those. And I have a, a new line that I've been working on. And I wanted to make something that was kind of guy friendly because although my husband likes the colors of lots of things that I dye, uh, he is not flashy at all. He doesn't want to have bright crazy socks even if they are in greens and blues. Like he likes the multicolored nature of the Falls of Rawra socks that I showed earlier, where it's all gray blues um, in different shades and hues, and but it it creates one muted color essentially. Like he's, if it were stripes of those colors, he really wouldn't be as open to using that sock yarn. So I decided to try to make a line of sock yarn that not only Tim would like, but also male knitters uh, who are looking for a more masculine yarn, although this would definitely work for women too. Uh, but male knitters, pe people who are knitting for men. So here's what I came up with. This is one of the colors. And this is a gray base that has these really nice blue and black speckles all over it and here's what it looks like as a skein and I'm so happy with this there are going to be three different colors and they're all gray and black with a different color so this is the blue one uh, there's going to be red and green and those are actually cooling right now but I'll try to pull them out in a second and show you but we'll have the red pill, the blue pill, and then the code. So we have been rewatching The Matrix, so I, I got a little inspired by that, but <laughs> uh, there will be more. This is just the first collection that's coming out for, you know, just for men, um, but these would definitely work for ladies as well. And we'll have four of the blue and black, uh, three of the red and black, and three of the green and black. And those will all be going up tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern, so definitely check it out. Um, and you can find all of our hand-dyed yarns and fibers at mistymountainmakers.com. Give me a second. Let me pull out one of the reds and one of the greens. Okay, so here's the green. It is dripping wet, so this isn't going to be too accurate for color. But check out the listing. You'll be able to see what it looks like. But... go and there. so it's a nice muted gray undertone with lots of speckles on top and if you're doing any knitting for a husband boyfriend brother father for the holidays these would be a really great choice for socks or scarves or just whatever you're looking to make for them. Okay, 
Now this one is also dripping wet. <laughs> but... There is the red and black. So we've got the red pill, the blue pill, not to be confused with the little blue pill, which all the ladies at the yarn shop thought is what I meant <laughs> when I told them about it. No, Matrix themed, not pharmaceutical. Uh, red pill, the blue pill, and the code. So those will all be up tomorrow. Uh, so definitely check it out uh, if you're interested. And uh, in other shop news, we will be having a dye demo over at Hook and Needle this Thursday. So I'll be there uh, dying from 6 to 7, but I'll probably be there. Uh, I'll be there earlier to set up, and then I'll be hanging out until the shop closes at 8. Uh, so if you're in the area, um, the shop is in Maryville, or Merville, as the locals call it, uh, then definitely stop by, uh, say hello. Uh, she's got, Christy has lots of chairs and seating available. Uh, lots of lovely lady, ladies who come in on Thursdays to sit and hang out, so it should be a lot of fun. Uh, so please definitely come by and say hi if you're in the area. All right, I think that's it for shop, uh, for shop update. <laughs> so uh, on to the not so nitty. So we have we don't really have any any news. Uh, I went to, Christy had a surprise birthday party on Saturday. We went to that. Christy's the owner of Hook and Needle, uh, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, but we've been mostly getting the house ready for my mom, uh, doing a lot of yard work, uh, uh, doing little things around the house, just trying to get ready. Uh, things that we've been putting off, and now that we're going to have our first guest in our new house, uh, we kind of have to step it up and get it done. So it's been, it's been a good motivator. We do have two new residents on the property. Uh, so we have one deer. I don't know if it's a stag or a doe. We had two does and then two fawns, I believe. And we had a stag that lived on the property. And so the past few nights, we go to let Tesla out, you know, for his last run of the night. And there has been a deer under the apple trees each time, which has been really cute. But also I think he's eating our apples, which is not so cute, but I'm kind of torn because it's a deer, but they're my apples. Uh, so it's been out, uh, and for the most part, he just, or she, it, just kind of hangs out and doesn't really care that we're there. When Tesla gets too close, it'll run off um, and just kind of hop the barbed wire and take off. But for the most part, it doesn't care that we're there. It's kind of like the turkeys, which is really nice. And then... We have a groundhog, I believe. We had one living on the far end of the property. Uh, we kind of we call it the spit. We've got a long, skinny portion of the property, but it looks like one moved in by the garage, which is kind of right over there. I'm usually recording near the garage with the with the girls, uh, but Tim saw it the other day, and uh, Tesla got all excited at, when I was doing the recording earlier today. And I thought the turkeys were going to be coming out of the side pasture because uh, they have a little track. You can see that they've kind of, they've walked through the grass to the point where you can see their trail. Uh, so I thought the girls were coming out with their little chicks and we'd have a little chick parade. But uh, no, I just saw a flash of brown and it dove back into the bushes. So I'm not sure what it is. We think it's a groundhog, but definitely new, new wildlife as the year goes by, which is really, really exciting. I keep hearing things like darting about in the woods and it's probably the turkeys might be that deer but I'll see if I can get a video for you guys of the deer or the groundhog uh, one of these days we'll see but that's probably the most exciting thing we've got going on so we're not we're not leading thrilling lives over here uh, but I guess I'll just leave it there then <laughs> uh, so, you know, thank you for tuning in. Uh, our next episode will be next Monday. So, um, thank you so much. If you, 
If you are um, a new viewer, I hope you liked it. And if you're a returning viewer, I really appreciate you guys coming by. It really means a lot to me to you know, see the views and the, the likes and everything, so thank you. Uh, definitely subscribe if you haven't already so you can get notified of new videos. And yeah, uh, you know, if, oh, and if you wanna take part in the There and Back Again Cal, check the link down below for the chatter thread. You can see all the, all the details there. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much for tuning in and happy baking.